Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and welcome to Spirit Church. Today, we have a guest with us, Pastor David Harabedi, and a friend of mine. You're not going to want to miss this broadcast. He's got an amazing teaching ministry, amazing testimony. I don't know which direction he's headed in. It could be prophetic. It could be healing. Um, a multifaceted anointing is on this man's life, so you're going to want to stick around and find out which direction we head for now. Stephen Moctezuma is going to lead us in some worship. Father, we praise you, God. Wherever you're at, just begin to praise Him and thank Him. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We love you, God. Father, we love you, Jesus. God, your presence, God. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare You're our living hope Jesus, your presence Sing, I've tasted and seen I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my chains are under your presence, Lord. Oh, we just sing Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here. come flood this place and Feel the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord Father, we give you glory, God We give you praise, God Just thank Him, thank Him Wherever you're at in your life, thank Him. Father, we thank You, God. Jesus, You're worthy, Lord. Father, we love You, God. Let us become more aware of Your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness so i pray that today as you worship the lord and as you sing that from your heart that everything within you crying out for the presence of the holy spirit Everything that was within you that was longing for the depths of the things of God, that was thirsting for the presence of Jesus, that today you would be filled. That today, as you watch this broadcast, as you join us here for Spirit Church, that God would give you the desires of your heart and that the desires of your heart would be Him. So, as I said, I have a very special guest with me here today. And I'm very excited because... We don't know which direction this is going to go because uh, my guest is gifted in many different areas and we've met 
Oh, before I introduce you, help me out here. How, 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 many, how, how long ago did we meet? Was about it, two years. Was it two years ago? We met through a, a, a mutual friend, um, Prophet Rob Sanchez, Kelly Lorkey. And actually, Kelly Lorkey, if, for those, those of you who remember us from back when we were on Charter, which was like six years ago, Kelly Lorkey was my first guest ever wow. on Encounter TV. And then they know Prophet Rob, the viewers know Prophet Rob, but Pastor David Harabedian, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Diga. I'm excited. It's good to have you here. You brought your, your, your wife along with you. She's watching. She's sitting there with my wife. They're both watching, and we're both uh, newly married. So yes. you were married how long ago now? November 9th. Wow. So about uh, seven months. Pretty exciting. And I had the privilege of uh, seeing you get married. Well, thank you. It was, yeah. it was good to have you there. And so I'm glad that you're here today. And so uh, as I was telling you, uh, this man is gifted prophetically, the gift of healing. I mean, I've seen the Lord move through. One of the things I've always appreciated about your ministry was how you're just so open to the move of the Holy Spirit. Your teaching is amazing. Your story is amazing. So I just told you when you got here, it's a free flow. Take it where you want it to go. It's all yours. Amen. Well, I, I think what I, I want to share today is, you know, my own spiritual formation because everybody has a story. There are many ways to Jesus, but Jesus is the only way to the Father. And everybody comes to the Lord in a different way. And hearing this story, I'm sensing the Lord is going to encourage mothers for wayward sons and daughters right now. Wow. My mother raised me in church. My father raised me in church, but it didn't move me at the time. There wasn't enough of the moving of the Holy Spirit in the public setting. And so the gifts that God implants in our children it's important that we nurture those gifts because if we don't nurture them and develop them and celebrate them, what happens is the children will go to the world where somebody will celebrate what they have. And there was a young man and he was about eight years old, this story goes, and he, his father and mother came home one day and uh, his brother had been babysitting him, the older brother, and, and had left him to his own devices. Long story short, the young boy came out and he had the skateboard and this skateboard had some kind of rough wheels on it and it was a piece of wood that was a little rough but he had put this skateboard together and the father was amazed he's like where did you get this skateboard i made it i made it in the garage and the father looked at it and he says well it's a little rough but oh my gosh eight years old to make a skateboard like this and the father went in and he looked and there was a hole in the side of the garage where there was a piece of wood missing and it was the size of the skateboard top now, the father had an opportunity right there to chastise his son or to celebrate his son's carpentry gift and his creativity gift. And the father looked and he said, son, I'm amazed at what you've done at eight years old. You have a tremendous gift that's brewing. I tell you what, why don't we go to the lumber yard and let's get some wood and we're going to do a father-son project together. And the first project we're going to do is repair the garage. In life, there are so many things that our children might do that we want to rebuke them for, chastise them for, because what they've done may appear to be wrong, when in reality their gift is starting to develop, but it just needs some guidance. And so I had gifts as a child. I was a dreamer, very accurate prophetic dreams. And there was nobody that really was able to guide me or develop that gift and nurture that and celebrate that. So I ran into some things as a child where I was like Joseph, a dreamer that shared my dreams. And instead of being celebrated and nurtured and guided in the prophetic, um, I was called dreamer and rebuked. And there's some stories behind that. We won't go in that tonight. But the bottom line is I went the wrong path and I went from being raised in church, being raised with right morals and standards. And I went to the world to develop my gifts and not into the church. And so we want to celebrate our children and their gifts, even if we don't recognize them. Uh, John and Paula Sanford had pastored about 150 churches at the time of their, uh, when this happened, and they were bishops and they were great men and women of God and their children ended up getting into a rock band. Well, in that time, you know, 30 years ago, 
for children to be in a rock band when parents are pastoring churches is a little bit of a disconnect. And the Heavenly Father spoke to John Sanford, who wrote The Elijah Task, and he said this. He said, encourage them in their gifts. Trust me. So the father ended up having to go to the children's uh, rock band concerts and this and that in high school. This and that. It ended up winning state. And eventually, each one of those children got right with God and everything they learned in the rock band world that they were interested in, then God flipped, working all things together for good for those that love him, that are called according to his purpose, as Romans 8.28 says. And every one of those children is now a pastor or a worship leader leading people into the presence of God. So celebrate your children's gifts. Now, this is what happened to me. I had an entrepreneurial gift, and the entrepreneurial gift caused me to want to go make money and to build things. And what happened was the enemy began to tempt me in ways to make extracurricular income. So being raised right, not drinking, not smoking, not chewing, not going with girls who do, one thing led to another. The allurement for me was the gift of the entrepreneur in me. One thing led to another, and I was offered the entrepreneurial opportunity to sell drugs. And so it started off, I sold my first two grams of cocaine at age 19 while I was in college. And a guy pulled up in a red Corvette, brand new, handed me two crisp $100 bills, two crisp Benjamins, and I handed him two little small packets. He tested it, he thanked me, and he drove off, and I looked at those, and I thought, that took two minutes. Well, that went from two grams to beginning to buy more and more. And the next thing you know, like a lobster that was cooked in cold water and the heat was slowly turned up, it became boiling water. And the next thing I know, I'm arrested with a stolen jet airplane in Boca Raton, Florida, with a Mercedes Benz and a bag of cash. And we had stolen another plane Sounds like the month like a, before. Out of a James Bond movie or something. It was, it's pretty crazy to look back on it and to think that raised in a small town in Warrensburg, Missouri, 13,000 people. My dad was a college professor. And to go from that to the international cocaine trafficking world, stealing jets for the Kali cartel, moving multi-kilogram quantities of cocaine, and to be arrested in that situation and to end up a day where you think it's just another deal, when in reality it was my last deal. And when I got arrested with a stolen jet of Mercedes bags and a bag of cash, I went to jail, I went directly to jail, I didn't pass go, I didn't collect $200, and I spent the next 19 years, six weeks, a month and a day in federal prison. But I had a praying mother. The power of a praying mother is greater than any devil, greater than any temptation, and God will answer a mother's prayers as she perpetually pounds heaven's door like the importunate widow in Luke 18 she went before a wicked judge. Now, our God is not wicked. He's merciful and he's loving. But Jesus gives this parable in Luke 18 that men ought to pray and not give up. There was a persistent widow that went before a wicked judge who feared not God nor regarded man. But because of her continual, perpetual, persistent coming, he eventually avenged her of her adversary. How much more will your heavenly Father do for you in behalf of your children if you pray and do not give up? The word, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. The word ask, seek, and knock tie in with the parable of the persistent widow in Luke 18, 1 through 11. And here's what it says. It says, ask, and it will be given. But in the original Greek language, the word ask is in the present imperative tense. That's a command to do something now with a constant, repeated 
action in the future until the desired result is achieved. So this word ask and it will be given, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened is really this in the original Greek language that the New Testament is written in, ask and keep on asking and it will be given. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find, knock and keep on knocking and the door will be opened unto you for all that ask and keep on asking receive. All who seek and keep on seeking will find all who knock and keep on knocking like the persistent widow, the door will be opened unto them. That regards healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, marital restoration. I'm encouraging you today by the Holy Ghost, don't give up. Be like the persistent widow that with her persistent coming, God avenges you of your adversary and gives you the breakthrough and rescues your son or your daughter from waywardness. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're older, they'll not depart from it. The gospel will bring them back to the cross and they'll find their way home. There's nothing more powerful than a mother's prayers and a father's prayers in behalf of their child. It sounds to me at the heart of God for this broadcast is persistent prayer for the prodigals. There are mothers watching, there are fathers watching, there are possibly grandparents watching, and there are possibly those children watching who have gone astray or are possibly considering going astray. I want you to talk to, though, the parent who has been persistent in this, they say, I've been praying, Pastor David. I've been doing what you've been saying to do, but I'm not seeing any results. What do you say to them? That is a great question. Let me share with you a story about an elm tree seed. In Missouri, we have elm trees, and they have these little flat seeds, and they look like next to nothing. It's not like an acorn that produces an oak tree that if you step on it, you, you can twist your foot. These elm tree seeds are flat and they fly down off the tree and they will gather hundreds of them in a crack in a sidewalk. Well, nobody pays attention to them because the wind will blow them away. But here's what happened. When I was a child, I noticed that one of the elm tree seeds had gotten into the crack in the sidewalk and a little tree started to sprout from this little bitty elm tree seed and it started to sprout upward just a little bit. Well, nobody did anything to the elm tree seed and nobody did anything to that elm tree as it started to grow up. A few years later, the sidewalk where the crack was began to buckle and it broke open the sidewalk and it buckled up and it got to the point to where people had to drive their bike around the tree and people had to walk around the tree because that little bitty elm seed got into the crack, laid root and stretched it out and pulled the water in and it broke through the cement and it grew strong. And today that elm tree, that elm tree is still there. Wow. So your prayers and the words that you speak to your children are like those elm seeds that go into the crevice and the crack of their stony heart. And trust me, the word of God is at work and at due time it will break out from the inside and grow the tree of life within them of salvation. I saw more people come to Christ while I was incarcerated because of a song that was sang to them by a grandmother when that child was bounced on the knee. Wow! I saw more people come to Christ because somebody shared a verse with them over the phone or in a letter or gave a life verse or put it on the wall in their house or on the refrigerator. I saw more people come to Christ off a little snippet of scripture because that's how powerful the infallible, unfailing, unavoidable, achievable word of God is when we send it forth under the anointing and then we add prayer to it it causes God's word to go forth and not to return void, but to accomplish 
that which it's been sent forth to do. I want to encourage mothers and fathers. I want to encourage also today children whose parents are prodigals. They're wayward. They're on drugs or alcohol or they're inconsistent. Pray for your parents because God hears the prayers of a child in behalf of their parent. God loves everybody equally. He loves you just the way you are, but he loves you way too much to leave you in your current condition. He's the God that transforms us from grace to grace, glory to glory, faith to faith, and he causes the path to grow brighter and brighter as we behold his face. And you are a product of the power of prayer. So we got about one minute here. That went quickly. Wow. But I want you to look into that camera, and I want you to say a prayer, first of all, for the one who was praying persistently for a prodigal, and second, for that prodigal that wants to come home. Lord, I do pray as one who was a prodigal who was wayward, and now I pray for those that are wayward. The scripture that comes to mind is out of the book of Malachi, that there was a book of remembrance written. I want you to call out the name of your loved one or loved ones right now, and God's going to write them in his book, and he's going to release angels and put people on assignment into their paths that they'll hear the gospel, and the gospel that you've shared with them will come under remembrance. It will lay hold and spring forth as salvation. So we declare and decree household salvation in accordance with Proverbs 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ye and your whole household shall be saved. We release the gospel nets to bring them into the kingdom for salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Begin to praise him because it's already done. Well, I pray that you were encouraged by that. Thank you, Pastor David, for, for joining us for here for Spirit Church. Now, how, what are you doing, and how do we get involved with helping what you're doing? We have leather-bound Bibles. We have uh, different Bibles that we provide to prisoners. We provide Bibles to prisoners in about 1,288 facilities right now. 1,200 facilities? And yeah. It's prison facilities. So here's a sample of one of our Bibles that we provide to the prisoners. That's, that's not one of those. That's like a, a solid leather-bound Bible. Yeah, this one happens to be a leather-bound. This is a, a Broadman and Holman King James Study Bible. Uh, this is an NIV Case for Christ Study Bible. And these are a couple of thousand pages. Uh, a lot of them have words of Christ in red. And this is the full Bible. It's a study Bible. In prison, what happens is there's approximately 22 different religions that are authorized, paid for by the tax dollars. And there's two Christian religions. One is Protestantism and Catholicism, and both of those contain a biblical Jesus, but the other 20 religions don't. So when a prisoner comes to Christ, if they don't have the Word of God with study helps on all the doctrines of Christ, they get tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the cunning craftiness of men. So all of our Bibles contain the central 1 Corinthians 15, essential truths, the deity of Christ, the importance of the baptism in the Spirit, the importance of the dictates, the central things of the Word of God. Foundations of the faith. And it gets them into the faith. Then the Holy Spirit comes and teaches them. So we've been doing this for 20 years. So you've been doing this for 20 years. You get, and you, you, you're a ministry that gets these, well, one of the ministries you have is, is a ministry that gets the Bibles to prisoners. And I love the response that you had. And somebody says, well, why don't you just give them paperbacks? And you said, the reason we give first quality study Bibles to the prisoners is simply this. The difference between a prisoner who got on a Bible waiting list and waited up to two years to get their Bible in the mail versus the average Christian in a westernized church in America is simply this. The prisoner takes time to read theirs. So a six-month 
paperback is all it will last and the covers will tear off. I know that's how long mine lasted before somebody sent me one. But a leather bound study Bible like this, I had this cover made while I was in prison for Heart and of America Prison Ministries. you've had that one for how many years? The date on this one is... 1995, right? January 31st, 1995, 20 years I've had this Bible. And a prisoner will spend three, four, five hours a day in the Bible. I have how, some many, how many hours did you spend, do you think, in prison reading the Bible? I calculated it one day. If at four hours a day, five days a week, that's 20 hours a week, 2,000 hours. I, I think it's about 20,000 hours in the Word. So the difference, be, and I love that because someone who asks the question exposes that they probably don't read the Bible themselves because theirs isn't falling apart. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so that's why they send them quality Bibles. This isn't, I mean, there's no profit here. It's not like they're making a back-end. I mean, I've checked it out myself. It's not like they're making a back-end deal on, and they're making profit overhand. This is simply the money goes straight to the Bible and the shipping, and it gets out to the, the prison. They, get, they worked out a deal with... The, the people who make the Bibles. And so uh, $20 gets a Bible, $5 gets that Bible shipped, $25 puts a Bible in the hand of a prisoner. And they have different options and stuff. So um, we will provide, um, we can provide video links and all that um, to that. So thank you so much again. Make sure you get involved, help this man. He has a heart for prison ministries and, um, and people in prison. So help out their, their cause and what they're doing there. Get involved with that. Um, and I think you'll be blessed uh, to see the results. So thank you again. Anything else you want to say before we, we say goodbye? One final statistic. When a male authority in the house gets born again, there's an 83 percentile chance that the whole household will be saved. When the mother of the house gets born again, there's a 17 percent chance of household salvation. When a child gets born again, there's a 4 percent chance of household salvation. Male authorities in prison, there's two million of them in America. Most of them represent more than one household. When they get genuinely born again and on fire for God, their whole household comes to Christ. They get an alignment with God in vertical relationship, and then they get in horizontal relationship across the earth with their family and friends. And that's where the cross is at. I love it. So get behind it. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God.